Hello, my fellow Stellar Gamers. It's your gal, GamerGalax792, and welcome back for another video. Today, we're back on with Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. Last time, we, um, we finished up investigating, and we've revisited some facts with Gumshoe about, like, Edgeworth getting the award, blah, blah, blah. And we learned about how that we found a cell phone by the car, by Edgeworth's car, which turned out to be Lana's. And we also found out that, sorry, that we found out that the call, that Lana called Emma just right before, just right after the murder. On the day of the murder, so uh, and we started part of Angel Star's testimony, our first witness, and <laughs> uh, she's wrapped all around this that Lana premeditated this, but we've kind of shot a hole in it because she didn't plan the weapon. So uh, let's just see what happens now. Angel's deduction. Lana's guy intended to murder the Sergeant Goodman. That's why she called the victim all the way to the prosecutor's office. I'm sure that the prosecutor had a grudge against the victim. Nothing else could drive that human machine to plunge the knife in and again and again. Again and again? The victim was summoned from the police department to the prosecutor's office. It does sound a lot like premeditation, doesn't it? So, if I ordered a pizza, does that mean I'm planning to kill the delivery boy? In any case, the defense may not cross-examine the witness. All right, give it to me. Lana's guy intended to murder the gunman. Okay. You said that. You said that, but you haven't told us how you know. That's what I'm about to tell you, rookie. I believe what she just said was a mere prelude to the story she's about to tell. Try not to interrupt her again, rookie. Never interrupt the storyteller. It's like pulling a bun out of the oven half baked. Something to have baked girl right in you. Try not to confuse the defense witness. They're not very quick on their feet. Oh. Edgeworth, really? Now, why did you believe the suspect had intentions to murder the victim? Actions speak for themselves. That's why she called the victim all the way to the prosecutor's office. You have no proof that Miss Sky called her in there. You have no proof that she didn't. Hmm. Mr. Edgeworth thought. There was no record of a call made to on the defendant, Miss Lana Sky's phone. She might have written him a letter. Come on, you could have tried public phone first at least. In any case, the victim came to the prosecutor's office where he was murdered. I'm sure he had a reason to be there. Witness. Why do you think it was the suspect who stubbed the victim that day? Had a grudge? Alright, I gotta hear this. What kind of grudge? Well, I wouldn't know that. Of course you don't. That's because she didn't have a grudge. Rookie. I have a lunchbox here. Now, what's inside? How am I supposed to know? See, we agree that there is a lunchbox here, but we don't know what's inside. A person's life is like a lunchbox with pretzels. Don't you agree? I get it. That's why my lunch was so salty. This judge isn't very good with metaphors. The suspect had a grudge against Detective Goodman. Will you tell us your basis for thinking that? It's simple. Nothing else could drive that human machine to plunge a knife in again and again. Wait a minute. Hold up. No, 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 no. One knife wound. Ma'am? Ma'am? Stop that. Stop it. You say she stabbed him again and again, but you couldn't have witnessed that. Are you testing me? Then I'll test you. Oh god. She's playing my games like Von Karma. With my moss surprise. I'm afraid the moss is growing under our feet as we wait, Miss Star. <laughs> get her, Ed get her, Edward, get her. W what do you mean? I shouldn't have to explain this, but take a look. Look at this. Autopsy report. Edward, you're stealing my thunder, man. Speaking of which, the autopsy report states that the death was due to a loss of blood from one stab wound. Aha! Uh -huh. You're right. Good show, Mr. Edward. Ah, uh -huh. he's my hero, really. 
What is this trial? What about my objection? No one noticed? Phoenix, well witnessed. You got the crime scene set, right? Uh, oh, thanks. I always believed that no one could ever mistake ketchup for blood. But now I realize that such mistakes are possible. So, you're saying you mistook something for blood? When she lifted her knife, I thought I saw blood at her breast. Blotted blood from her victim. That's why I thought she must have stabbed him at least twice. Then tell us what you saw that you thought was blood. Testify. <coughs> her red mouth looks like but looked like blood to me. That's how ghastly the whole scene was. Muffler? Her red muffler? Yes, like a scarf. The chief prosecutor always wears one around her neck. So she can be easily hanged at a moment's notice, I suppose. Right. Yeah. Oh yeah, that. This guy was wearing a red scarf, wasn't she? But wait. Isn't it odd that you mistook that for splattered blood? That's that's a little too bulky to be splattered blood there, ma'am. Well, people often mistake my beard for a bib. Judge with a bib. That's why this place feels so much like kindergarten sometimes. Actually, I did think I saw some traces of blood on her chest. However, the autopsy report is clear on this matter. There was only one knife wound. Apparently, Mastari isn't entirely sure of her own testimony. Mr. Wright, this is our chance! A chance for what, I wonder? Mastari has turned out to be as short-tempered as she looked when we met her. Challenging her abilities as a detective really set her off. Sure, wick burns out the fastest. It's a scientific fact. I wonder. Wouldn't it depend on the size of the candle? I mean, add more wax and even a really short wick would burn longer. Obviously, more scientific testing is required. <laughs> okay. Oh, wait. Shit. Whoops, I went too far ahead. I know. Sorry, I went too far ahead. Red muffler. So we're talking about the scarf. I'm gonna look at something. Okay, we got the crime scene photo. Hold up! Wait, wait, wait. Ma'am, ma'am, ma'am. Really? Objection! Miss Star, I demand an explanation. Edgeworth! What the fuck? The witness is clearly not suited for detective work. W what? The suspect was not wearing a scarf or muffler of any kind when she stabbed the victim. Edgeworth, I love you. Babe, I love you. Stop stealing my thunder. And you've proved it yourself with this photograph. Huh? But, but that... That can't be! Only a professional lunch lady could be so utterly clueless. Congratulations. Perhaps you finally found out found your true calling in life. Mm, harsh words, but good. In the end, Mr. Edward prevailed. What was my objection? Chop liver? Edward, stop stealing my fucking thunder. There, it was there, a scarf. No, not really, but something went red, really. Well now, where were we? The witness has given us an entertainment interlude, but back to business. What? Very well, witness, continue your testimony. You saw the crime and apprehended the suspect. Tell us about that. Very well. I do remember some things accurately, at least. Ultimately, we couldn't shake the most important part of her testimony. The most important part? The part where your sister stabs the victim. This next testimony might just be the moment of truth. Alright, give it to me. Apprehending the suspect. Man, <laughs> this is a lot of testimony out of this lady. After the murder, the suspect attempted to run behind a partition, partition off to her side. I quickly caught her, explained her rights to her, and arrested her on the spot. Ah, yes. When I arrested her, she mentioned the muffler. That's what had me confused in my earlier testimony. The chief prosecutor made to escape the, against Angel Star. Resistance is futile. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. 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 Okay. You're quite determined about the scarf, aren't you? I strike like a snake and bite like a cobra. That's me, Angel Star. 
That wasn't a very good metaphor. First of all, Cobra is, is a kind of snake. Don't bother with the details unless you want to get bitten. No thanks. Note to self, Mr. Wright is weak against poisonous snake bites. The chief prosecutor tried to resist, but her efforts were in vain. She knocked my hands aside, kicked over an oil drum. An oil drum? Hard to imagine. Oh, she's beautiful but deadly. A predator this one. A leopard woman. Rawr. Very well, Mr. Wright, your cross examination, if you will. I don't even think I want to. Okay, okay. After the murder, the suspect attempted to run behind a partition off to her side. Alright, tell me a little more. So, where is this partition on the floor plan? I'm sure she means the wall next to the car. That's right. There was a wall there, about six feet high. She was obviously trying to hide herself. Quite a natural thing for a criminal to do. And what did you do then? I quickly caught up to her to explain her rights and arrested her on the spot. Alright. You stay quickly. Were you close to the suspects? As I just said, I was only 30 feet away from her the whole time. Hmm. Maybe I should press her more. Because she said that she was in the visitor a lot, but like... Something's not up here. I like to see this floor plan on the floor plans just to be safe. The lunchland car was... She was a visitor, thus she was parked in the block. So you witnessed the murder from here? That would make it about 30 feet from the car, I guess. Is that correct, Miss Star? Y yes, that's right. But there was a chain link fence in front of you. I went over it, of course. No, amazing. The coffee queen lunched Lady Athlete in deep. It would have taken her a little time to climb over the fence. So she couldn't have gone to my sister that fast. Yeah, that fence was about 9 feet high, too. So how did Miss Guy not get away? Hmm... Ah yes, when I arrested her, she mentioned the muffler. She mentioned the muffler? What exactly did she say? If I remembered exactly, I would have told you my testimony. Cheeky. Anyway, all I heard her say was the word muffler. Just that one word? So, what you heard wasn't the suspect talking to you, but to someone else? Yes, the chief prosecutor was talking on her phone. Her phone? You can't read. Alright. By phone, do you mean the cell phone discovered at the crime scene? Yes, ultimately. Ultimately? My memory... It's like a salmon heading upstream, you see. Oh, don't play that card. Yanni Yogi already tried that card. Don't play that card on me. No, the court doesn't see Miss Star. The chief prosecutor first attempted to use the phone hanging on the wall. On the wall? Right. Near the car, there was an emergency phone on the wall. Apparently it was out of order. How convenient. And so she used this, her cell phone? Indeed, the emergency phone was out of order that day. Mm. Good witnessing, witness. Good witnessing? Whatever happened to good testifying? That'd be a first. You should, of course, add this to your testimony. The things I do to please this rookie defense attorney. I didn't ask- I don't ask you to please me, ma'am. Uh, Lana's cell phone updated. The word muffler was overheard during a call made to Emma at 518. Alright. I saw it all. How she tried to use a phone on the wall, but had her cell- had to use her cell you wouldn't be able to see it. Hold up. Yeah, there's this thing right here. So if we're saying that she witnessed it from here, there's a fence, there's the car, the phone's right on this side, she wouldn't be able to see it. Hey, no, nah, ma'am. No, ma'am. No, get out of here. Get out of here. Miss Star, I have to conclude that you have a personal grudge against Miss Lana Sky. Edward, stop it. Stop it! Yeah, st stop! Stop! This witness is a formal detective. Her testimony is unmarried by personal bias. Well, who would have thought that you would be my knight in shining armor, prosecutor? You who, together with the chief prosecutor, kicked me out two years ago. Well, Miss Star, this is a fatal contradiction with your testimony. How do you explain this? <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Mess with me, and I'll make you cough it all up. <coughs> Ma'am, stop with the Andy windows. We have a child. We have children in here. <clears throat> Let's look at this floor plans. 
You said you witnessed the crime from this point. However, if that's true... You couldn't possibly have seen Miss Sky making that phone call. Aha! Uh -huh. I got you! This time Edward didn't stop me! <laughs> I believe you see what I'm getting at. That emergency phone was on the back side of this partition. If indeed you were in B-Block, you couldn't have seen it! Oh yes, this music! Ah! Yes, this music's back! Order, order, what's the meaning of this? It's simple, your honor. She's not coughing up lunch, she's coughing up lies! Edward, get out of here, man! I love you, but get out of here! That's quite a claim, Mr. Wright. Perhaps you will allow me a question? Tell us exactly what lie this witness has told to the court. Here's where the counterattack begins. I can't afford to get this wrong. The witness lied about... My gap! Okay, so she said that she saw her make the phone call. And her claim was that in B-Block, it's not the order of the events. It isn't what she saw, but it was where she saw it. Miss Guy tried to use the emergency phone, but it was out of order. What's significant about this fact? Nothing. Therefore, it would be pointless for Miss Star to lie about it. Pointless to lie? I see. But say the witness did actually see Miss Guy using the emergency phone. It would mean... Miss Star witnessed the crime from a different location. Edward, stop! A different location? Now that's a pointless lie if I've ever heard one. No, 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 come on, Phoenix. Yeah, get him. Before you call my lie pointless, at least let me tell it. Let me ask a question to our clever wordsmith, Mr. Wright. <laughs> Just where was the witness when she saw the crime? All the testimony we've heard until now points in one direction. The place from where Miss Star witnessed the crime was here. Okay, so we're not saying it's over here. That's out, because she couldn't have seen that by there. It's not anywhere here because, well, she probably would have been killed as well if she witnessed Lana, so... The only place she could have seen the telephone... Minus the partition... And got there so freaking quickly... Is the security room. This is the only place where she could have been. I thought I got it wrong because the bar didn't disappear for a second. I was like, what? But now, the security guard room? Indeed, the security room in the underground parking lot is well positioned. It's built on the second floor so you can see the entire lot. Hmm, she would have been able to see the emergency phone from there. But why there? There are many other places where she could have seen the phone. No, not in this case, your honor. The witness not being part of the prosecutor's office couldn't park in A block. The only place where she could have seen the crime and the back of the partition is here. I remember in your testimony you said you brought a lunch to your boyfriend in the security guard room, yes? Well, Miss Star? Caught her. How many years have I been getting the better of men? I think that the tables could be turned. That's because I don't fall for women that easily, ma'am. I fall for men. Uh huh? Never mind. Today, a man has gone the better of Angel Star. Gotcha! Order, order, witness! What have you done? You used to be a detective, you should know better. I'm not turning back. The guilty will be punished. And I'll do what I must to make sure justice prevails. The guilty. She's talking about Miss Sky. Um, Mr. Wright, doesn't this strike you as odd? Why does why didn't the star lie? It doesn't make sense. Huh? She could have just said she saw the crime from the security guard station. It wouldn't change anything. Exactly. This photograph tells all. It was the defendant who stabbed the victim. That truth still stands. No, come on, Phoenix. It still stands? I disagree, Mr. Edgeworth. What? If a witness is found to be lying, they're guilty of perjury. She knows this. She wouldn't risk that without a good reason. So tell us what her reason was, Mr. Wright. Me? Who else? Mr. Wright, let's review what we know. Okay, what do we got? Miss Star witnessed the crime scene from the security guard station, right? But she lied and said she saw him from B-Block. It must make a vital difference. For what? What would change? Hmm. Angle of the view of the crime. Distance to the crime. Difference in light. I don't think it's lighting. Alright, let's look at a few things. Okay, let me look back at the photo. Alright, let me lie. 
Okay, so this star originally claimed that she saw it from this parking lot and about here. So that would make it roughly about 30 feet away between here and the car where she witnessed the murder. But now we're saying that we could say that she saw it from in here to here. That would change the distance, so that the claim of her distance that she saw from 30 feet away. That would like sh that would shorten it. it. Changes the distance between her and the scene of the crime. Really, my condolences, Mr. White. But one look at the floor plans, and it's quite clear. The distance between the scene of the crime and the gas station is 30 feet. I don't see how that would change what she could see. I don't. No, no, no. Sit, sit down. What she saw is not in question here. What matters is the time it would take her to reach the scene of the crime. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Come on, Edgeworth. Get quicker on your feet. Get quicker on your feet, I'm gonna fucking leave you in the dust. Miss Star, you witnessed the crime from the security guard station. Now, how long did it take you to go from there to the scene of the crime where you arrested Miss Guy? Well, witness? You. Y yes You ordered the squid wheels, right? Quality of my lunches has gone from low to inedible. I was bringing the PB and J lunch with, with fresh boysenberry jam to my boyfriend. Mm, boysenberry for the boyfriend? He wasn't in the station, so I waited. I witnessed the crime from the glass walled station. Alright. So that would took her way less time. And before I knew what I was doing, I found myself running towards the scene. But the door was locked. I couldn't open it. You're saying you ran. That's why I had to go through the visitor's parking lot and be a block. That's quite a detour. You got no kidding. It probably took me at least five minutes to get to the scene of the crime. Five minutes? Th that long long I could have just booked it. Holy shit. Hmm, this changes things considerably. But it was that woman over there in the defendant's chair who stabbed him. I know it. I have photographic evidence. I swear it. I swear it on my finest plastic spork. You have a point, and the spork is a wonderful invention. Would you like another caviar lunch? Absolutely. Uh oh. Mr. Wright, you have to do something. Do I have any evidence to stop this? Well, we can't just sit back, because otherwise we're fucked, though. Okay. Come on, Phoenix, let's go. Come on. Five minutes between the witnessing the murder and the arrest? Think about it. You can make pasta in that amount of time, if you like it al dente. I've got lunch boxes that tie pasta into knots, rookie. No, no thanks. A five minute blank. Isn't that strange? Mm hmm. Strange. If you were a criminal, what would you do with five minutes, Your Honor? Well, um, I guess I'd do the scene. Hey! Don't get the wrong idea. I didn't kill anyone. I'm not saying you did. But you have the instincts of a killer. You would run. But this time was different. Miss Guy dawdled at the scene of the crime. She even had her picture taken. No true criminal would act this way. It's inconceivable. Yeah! Witness has blank in her testimony. ready to go. Unfortunately, I appear to have overestimated the account of her professor. He did it! He screwed that can shut, Mr. Wright! I was too close. I'm afraid that the cough of Queen has been dethroned. And with that, court is adjourned. Oh, thank God. But who's holding it? Are we holding? Ma'am? Mr. Edgeworth, you ordered the squid wheels, right? That's what she tried to force off on me. I prefer to not take the defense team's leftovers. Anything else to say? I might be able to save you. I have decisive evidence. W what was that? Is this another one of her trick lunch boxes? My apologies, but we have no further questions to ask of you, Miss Star. Ah. 
Is this your jumbo lunchbox? Woohoo! A triple decker. Really? Out of deference, deference of the witness determination, I'll allow one more testimony. Let's hear about this decisive evidence. You're kidding me. Like the lunchline model says, you won't be disappointed. She's. What's she gonna pull out of her lunchbox this time? A dead body? That'd be sweet. Decisive evidence. I should have mentioned those five minutes when I wasn't looking at the crime scene. And now, the matter of the victim's shoe, did I not bring this up? What? What? The shoe? The types of blood were found on this shoe. One, of course, was a victim. And the other blood type matched that of the defendant, Miss Bonas Sky. This shoe proves that it's flawless, decisive evidence. Why was that unsaid sooner? W what? There was blood found on that shoe? Try lunchtime for all your lunch. Your lunch and decisive evidence need. You're kidding! Witness, what's the meaning of this? Why is this the first time I've heard of this evidence? Simple, as I've already said. I don't trust you with evidence, Mr. Edgeworth. That's why I took the liberty of investigating this myself. And you had blood tests performed? Didn't I mention it? I have three boyfriends in forensics. In any case, your honor. I can't accept this as evidence. What? You must know the two rules of evidence law. Rule number one. No evidence shall be shown without the approval of the police department. In other words, the shoe is illegal evidence. At least for the time being. I is that right, Mr. Ray? Seems so. Edgeworth sure is celebrating. Not so fast, Mr. Edgeworth. Uh-oh. Don't forget, I used to be a detective. As I mentioned previously, the shoe has already been tested by a member of the forensics department. As you can see, it was approved by the police department as of today. Even the general public can produce official evidence, Mr. Edward. Uh oh. Is that right, Mr. Wright? Seems so. Edward is looking pretty stolen. You could at least study some evidence while really. The prosecution's complaints now. Notwithstanding, it appears that this evidence satisfies the first rule of evidence law. However, it seems you have yet another count against you, witness. Anything to ensure that the guilty are properly judged. Victim's shoe added to the court record. White enamel shoe bears traces of blood from Goodman and Long Sky. Very well, Mr. Wright, you may cross examine the witness. <laughs> oh, God. I don't want to! I should have mentioned the, those five minutes when I wasn't looking for the crime scene. And now to the matter of the victim's shoe. Did I not bring this up? The types of blood were found on this shoe. One, of course, was a victim. And the other blood type matched that of the defendant, Miss Lana Sky. You can't say for sure the blood belongs to the defendant without a blood test. You claim to know something about blood tests, Brookie? Huh? Well, speak up! Uh, well. Blood comes in four types, A, B, O, and AB. However, you can't tell from a blood test whether a murder was committed in cold blood. <laughs> Phoenix. No. That's just a figure of speech, Mr. White. Actually, we can differentiate between millions of types with all with all the blood tests out there. Which means that we can more or less narrow any sample of blood down to just one person. Or so I hear. That's pretty specific. If I had a little more time, I would have gotten DNA test results. But they said that there's very little doubt it could be anyone in this uh, disguise. So the suspect's blood was found on the victim's shoe. That time was directly to the death of Dr. Tyson Goodman. I was afraid he was going to say that. The shoe proves it. It's flawless sites of evidence. I don't, I don't believe in the sites of evidence from witness. I can't let this evidence go through without a fight. You ordered the peppered fish guts, right? Some like it hot, Mr. Ray. Some, like your client, she is in enough hot water to make a whole vat of soup. Mr. Ray, do you or don't you have a problem with the shoe? A problem? This is critical. Is there a problem with the victim's shoe? Mm hmm. If I'm not imagining things, I say there's one critical problem with this evidence a clear contradiction. That gleam in your eyes. You're still young, rookie. I'd give you a peppered fish gut now. But you couldn't take the heat, could you? Let's hear what Mr. Wright has to say. What is contradictory about the victim's shoe? Mm. 
that was the problem with this evidence. Okay, that was the problem. Oh, wait a minute. Whoa! Hold hold the phone. Yo! There's blood underneath? Okay, here it is. I wonder if you noticed. There's blood on the bottom of the shoe. Don't mess with me, rookie. Or it'll be the bl your blood on the bottom of my shoe. Did she just threaten me? Hmm, indeed there is quite a bit of blood on the bottom of the shoe. That makes sense. The victim was stabbed with a knife. What could possibly be contradictory about blood on the bottom of the shoe? Okay, blood on the bottom. Oh. Come on, Edgeworth. I would have thought you would have been smart about this. Here, here's the problem. The problem lies in the footprint. There's no fucking blood. The the print? Note that the bottom of the victim's shoe is covered in blood. Then, isn't it strange? Why was were there any blade footprints found by the scene of the scene of the crime? Aha! Uh -huh. As you can see, there were no traces of any such footprints at the scene of the crime. That contradicts your claim about the shoe. This picture only shows part of the floor, so there could have been blade footprints. No, no, no! Come on, Phoenix, get him. Then where are they, Mr. Edgeworth? Because you checked the scene and found nothing of the sort. Order, order, order. Well, witness. What? Uh, I, uh, get going, Mr. Wright. But it's true that the lack of a footprint is a contradiction. But then we have to ask why there wasn't a, a footprint. Oh, that's true. There has to be a reason why there wasn't a footprint. Think, Mr. Wright, think. Hey, I don't know why it's not there. I'm just good at finding contradictions. What? Who's- Who's now? Oh, Edgeworth? Edgeworth? Really? I see. Now I get it. Get what? Oh, witness is more devious than I gave her credit for. We were hoodwinked to the, to the very end. But she slipped. There was one vital hint to the truth in her testimony. What are you talking about? Think back to when she told us about apprehending the suspect. The chief prosecutor tried to desist, but her efforts were in vain. She knocked my hands aside, kicked over an oil drum. Oh, she's beautiful but deadly. A predator, this one. A leopard woman. Rawr. Oh, fuck the oil drum. Is that what she's getting at? I thought that was that was a strange thing for the no for the normally cool-headed chief to do. I'm kidding. Now, witness, allow me to ask a very simple question. This oil drum, was it empty? Oh, that? Mm -hmm. I'm not sure I like your attitude, Mr. Edgeworth. Though apparently you're not the slowest conveyor bell in the lunchbox factory. Witness, well, was the oil drum empty? The oil drum kicked over by the chief prosecutor was brimming with water. But water? What does that mean? Ed Phoenix, still don't get it, Mr. Wright. Do you want to know the reason she knocked it over? The real reason? Aha! Uh -huh. You don't mean... Yes, the suspect knocked over that oil drum for one reason and one reason alone. To erase the bloodstains that would become evidence against them. Ugh! No. That ties things up quite nicely. The bloodstains left on the victim's shoes tie her quite clearly to this murder. Then, after the deed was done, she knocked over the oil drum to erase the tet's telltale sign. Why, that's a prosecutor's specialty, erasing evidence. That reminds me, Miss Sky's right hand was hurt. Didn't she say she cut herself when she stabbed him? So that's when my sister's blood got on the shoe? Well, I see no reason to prolong this trial. Mr. Wright, do something, please! What? What can I do? Your sister has confessed the crime, and she tried to conceal it. But... Enough. There is no need to further debate. A verdict, your honor. Very well. Oh, fuck. The angel star is on the prosecution side. She could have been lying about the water. 
The squad finds the defender in the Slana Sky. Uh oh. Wait, who's holding it? Who's who now? Her? Little girl, what did you just say? Huh? M me? Did you just say that I, Angel Star, was on the prosecution side? W well, yeah, you are. You're saying my sister hit Evans by reason of the bloody footprints. Well, uh oh. I thought you had your fill, but here you are demanding a second helping. Oh, the lunchbox. Lunchbox called evidence. Wait, wait, don't tell me you have something else. Really? Oh shit, Edward's not having it. The time for deliberations has passed. Any further comments and you will be held in contempt of court. Your threats don't scare the cough up queen. Look at this. Uh. A photograph? I had it just in case anyone had the gall to suggest that the white shoe didn't belong to the victim. Hmm, I see no room for error in this evidence. Mr. Wright, wait! Look at the asphalt in this photo! Hey, it's clearly wet! Oh, shit. The race of the last trace of doubt from the court's mind. Immediately after the murder, the crime scene was washed with water. I I'm sorry, Mr. Wright. I guess I, I couldn't help after all. It's not your fault. I knew I couldn't win this case from the beginning. And since this is what your sister wanted anyway. Mm -mm, there's no way. There's no way it could be over. I'm sorry, Mia. Phoenix? Right? Wet or not? Oh fuck, it's Mia! Don't be so quick to throw in the towel. I haven't vi voiced Mia in so long, holy crap. Get yourself up off the asphalt. Take another good look. Don't give up. Not until the bitter end. Okay. This is the last piece of evidence. Very well. This time, I'd like to declare a verdict for good. Nope. I'm not letting you. Okay. <laughs> Come on, Phoenix. Let's go. Let's do it. Your honor, wait. What is it with you people? Can't I hand down my verdicts in peace anymore? Nope. Whatever it is, can I wait? No! D no, it can't. Then it'll be too late. Look at this photograph. The one last submitted. This trial isn't over until we give every piece of evidence proper consideration. So, right? Are you saying there's a problem with this latest piece of evidence? Yes? Yeah? I'll think later. Yeah, there's a problem. Right or wrong, I've got to go ahead with this. I suppose since we've come this far, we should give every claim a fair shake. Very well, Mr. Wright. Show the court the problem in this photograph. Hmm, what's wrong with this photograph?
Sorry about that. Um, what's wrong with this photo? Okay, um, hope you guys had a little time to look at it. Um. Hmm. License plate. With the water. Shoe just kind of chilling. Socks. Look at those toes. Oh, what is that? Oh my god. A car muffler. Oh my god. That's what's wrong here. The problem is in this photograph is here. What's this? There's something poking out of the car's muffler. Wait just a moment, Mr. Edgeworth. Your Honor? You just said muffler. However, I do not see, see no trace of a muffler or scarf of any kind in this photograph. A muffler is also a part of a car or motorcycle, Your Honor. Just think of it as part of the exhaust system. A pipe. I see, and I see. What's that suspicious looking claw sticking out of the car's muffler? That's what I'm worried. <laughs> so what if there was something sticking out of the muffler? What does it have to do with this case? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. I think not, ma'am. I don't think so. Sorry, Miss Star, but it's not going to be that easy. In fact, you've already told us why this is so important to this case. You said it as much in your testimony. What? Let's hear what Mr. Bright has on his mind. Tell us why you think this piece of cloth in the muffler is related to this case. Right here. The phone. Miss Star, recall your testimony for the court. Ah, yes. When I arrested her, she mentioned the muffler. That's what had me confused in my earlier testimony. Muffler! <laughs> ah! Could it be that the muffler you heard mentioned was actually this exhaust pipe? If so, that means this piece of e cloth is vital evidence. Oh. Ah! Got her. Well, it seems we will have to suspend the proceedings. Suspend? I found myself wondering about that piece of cloth. If we leave any questions unanswered here, we do a disservice to the law. Have the car of the crime scene inspected at once. Bring me that cloth. The verdict will wait until after we've seen all the evidence. Agreed. I suppose so. Phew. That was close. But, we made it. At least for now. This court will adjourn for a 30 minute recess. It's lunchtime after all. Still hungry? Oh my god. <laughs> Man. Holy crap. Okay. So I think that'll do it. So that was the other part of that trial. So we finished it. So next time I see you guys. We'll uh, continue on, but I guess after the 30-minute recess. So thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Until then, take care. Bye-bye!